Welcome back into First Things First. We're talking about the second best quarterback in the AFC, Josh Allen. Josh Allen's earned my respect and fear. You know whose respect he's also earned? The best defensive player maybe of all time, certainly in the NFL, Aaron Donald. Take a listen. He's a big guy. He's a tough guy. He's athletic. Um, in my in my opinion, he's like a um, futuristic kind of Big Ben, a little bit more athletic, mm. can move a little bit better. But um, he's a guy that ain't, ain't gonna go down easy. So you gotta come with your big boy pads when you get to wrap him up. So so there's ah. Aaron Donald on Big Ben. So we decided to bring in our resident Big Ben super fan, who also doubles <laughs> as a Super Bowl champion, Eric Mangini, coach. Let me, I'm going to give my take quickly here because I don't know how to not give my opinion on things. Uh, I actually think this is a pretty good comparison. I understand that Josh Allen does not have the pelts on the wall that Big Ben did, but the physical presence, the difficulty in bringing him down, the ability to make big time throws with people draped around him, all of that does feel Big Ben ish. And when he says futuristic, what I think he means, and again, then I'll throw it to you, is while Big Ben, because he was so big and powerful, was a threat with his legs when things broke down, in today's NFL, teams are more apt to just draw draw up quarterback-designed runs, quarterback-driven runs, and that was an element the Steelers rarely, if ever, used, and the Bills use quite often. So I think Aaron Donald has a pretty spot-on comparison. What do you think? Yeah, I think if your view of futuristic is that they're both look kind of the same and are big and physical, and, and that's what futuristic <laughs> means, then I think they're they're identical. But when you look at the two guys, they're they're very different because Big Ben, what do he play? 18 years? I, I forget how many years, but Josh Allen already has over a thousand more rushing yards, and and he's almost at the same amount of rushing attempts that Big Ben had. So so they're not they're not even close in terms of of their approach. What what made Big Ben so dangerous is that he was scrambling to throw, and we would have to we would have to uh, stress over and over and over again when you play Big Ben. Big uh, broken plays equal big plays. If he's able to get out of the pocket and extend the play, you had real problems in coverage. It's a totally different equation than a guy who's going to run a quarterback-driven run or a guy who, when the play is going to break down, can go ahead and get you know 15 or 20 yards. I think Big Ben's longest run was maybe 30 yards over the course of his career. So, yeah, futuristic in, in the sense that they look kind of the same and they're both big and strong. So I guess. I guess if that's what the the future is, <laughs> then okay. But in terms of of style, it's it's a radically different style of how they use their size and and how they use use their strength. All right, coach, I've got a question for you, and it's a simple one. How should teams stop Josh Allen? And Nick and I are mortal enemies. You can tune into Twitter where despite his tweet saying that he doesn't hate me, I don't know, sometimes his actions and words <laughs> speak louder than his tweets. <laughs> but, Nick, we are in the same boat. Here's what Josh Allen has done in the most recent games against the Patriots and the Chiefs. It's not great. Uh -huh. And granted, you had the benefit of a coin flip, but 322 oh, yards in two games against the Chiefs, 255. My goodness, 16 touchdowns and zero interceptions. Passer rating, I'll probably even that out around 120-something. Oh, my gosh, 400 rushing yards and a TD. That's so 300. I'm very, very nervous, Coach. On television. You're right. I got you, buddy. You're coach, fine. how should Nick and I <laughs> be trying to stop Josh Allen? But look, that could be a little bit more of an indictment of, of, of the defense than, than the offense. When you look at Josh Allen, and, and look, I, I think Josh Allen's progress has been incredible. It really has. But last year versus the year before, he was down in number of touchdown percentage. He was down, or he's up in interception percentage. He was down in completion percentage. He was down in wins. He was down 15% in quarterback rating. And he's got no Brian Dayball. What I want to see is how he adjusts to to a different offensive coordinator yes. and we could say that we could say that that it you know everything wow. is just going to continue 
an upward climb, and that is the hope. But there, there, there is something to be said for continuity. There is something to be said for having the person who, who's oh, helped yes. develop you. But the numbers this year or this past season versus the season before were, were down. And, and momentum is an amazing thing, especially from from a, a coverage perspective where he's great. He's always going to have to be great. It, it, it just doesn't work that way. You, you've got to you've got to keep making progress. And there's, there's a lot of really good young running quarterbacks, but typically there's not a lot of good old ones. So if you're going to take a bunch of hits. That's going to pile up, and, and I don't think the Bills want to be in that business very long. Well, and that is, listen, there is a big analytics Twitter wants the Bills to essentially never run the football unless it's a Josh Allen run because the Josh Allen runs are so incredibly effective. And I think that might be the Bills' strategy if they plan to only have the team for one more year or two more years. But because they hope Josh Allen is their quarterback as long as Jim Kelly was, they they have to, you know, they 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 have to call their offense and run their team with that in mind that even if our best chance at getting this first down is a Josh Allen run, are we going to do that on every third and short? Are we or are we going to you know, understand that we want to be our quarterback for the next decade and those hits do pile up? What, what flipped for me with Josh Allen Wilds was I now, after that playoff game against the Chiefs and after how we saw repeatedly, because remember last year I was calling roller coaster, that he would have these super high highs and then the lows were yeah. not what a great quarterback was supposed to have. He didn't have the consistency. Where he has earned, and I not just respect, but fear, is he is one of only, in fact, he is the only, Quarterback, I guess Rodgers, one of only two other quarterbacks in the league that I feel like if Mahomes plays his A-level game, could match it. I think Josh Allen's A-level game can match it. The question is, can, you know, can he prevent those C and D-level games, make them B minus level games, which is what differentiated him last year from you know, Mahomes throughout his career, Rodgers last year, what I think Herbert will be this year, the other quarterbacks. But Josh Allen, when he is, when he's firing on all cylinders, Wilds, it does feel somewhat of a helpless thing. Because if you, in order to cover all the receivers, because he can throw it so far, you've got to have a safety back. Now, all of a sudden, they have a numerical advantage up front, and he can take off and run. And now, while the Chiefs, obviously, despite all that, we're able to force overtime and win the game, and your team got beat by 45 points. I, we are, we, I, I, we're not in the same boat, but we have, you know what I mean. But, but there, we're passengers in the same ocean, waving at each other. Your, your boat sinking, yeah, and fair. mine was sailing to the AFC Championship yeah. game. But we did get hit by the same wave. So I understand what you're saying. Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't that's say fair. we're in the same yeah. boat there, though. Well, okay, I, I, I think that's fair. No, the, what terrifies me the most, Coach? And it sounds like a basic observation. But in that playoff game, in the post-game press conferences, it was like, what happened? And I was expecting some sort of, like, real Patriots-esque analytical breakdown of the defense. And it was largely, yeah, we tried everything we could. Couldn't stop him. Like, what? <laughs> what? That, that's, that's the takeaway? Like, ah, couldn't stop him. Whoa, my goodness, did you see that? It was, the, it was the most ludicrous thing I'd ever heard, especially since he had just come off of going into Foxborough and torching us. The fact that he did it two times in a row and the Patriots had no answer in the playoffs after getting torched was very frustrating and scared the living daylights out of me. Be totally honest. Well, what I'm shocked about is that you actually were expecting an analytical discussion of what they did wrong defensively at the podium. Just That's something. The, probably yeah. the most shocking part <laughs> of the Start pushing those decisions into third down, into red zone, and into two-minute critical situations as